After years in development, Microsoft's next generation console was finally ready to be unveiled at a media event codenamed Newcastle. Coming off the success of the Xbox 360, expectations were through the roof. In a recent interview regarding Redfall, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, talked about losing the console we wars. Lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation, where everybody built their digital library of games. Many have offered their viewpoints on why this happened. Watch TV, TV, TV remote, TV, 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 television, 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 TV, TV. But was it really about TV? The price? Connect? The terrible interview? Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Right. So stick with 360. That's your message if you don't, well, you don't like it. If, if you have zero access yeah. to the Internet, that is an offline <laughs> device. And All of these things and many more were damaging to the brand. But these were just symptoms. The real issue was culture. When Peter Moore left, the new leadership introduced a very different culture, one that was more about patronage and less about meritocracy. I was one of the first people on the Xbox team. We were this scrappy little team in a big bureaucracy. We had grown quickly, but Xbox still felt like this very close-knit, mostly meritocracy-based culture. Everyone believed that if you worked hard and shipped successful products, you would be rewarded. You could tell Peter Moore, the current leader, that he was wrong. He had humility and he sought out feedback. When he left, that changed. You had a small cabal that made the decisions on their own. You no longer got to leverage the power of the whole team. It was just a few people making the decisions. That model can totally work. It often does. The challenge is, if that small group of people is wrong, well, you get the X-bone. I was a vice president at WB Games when Xbox One was announced. I was blown away with how detached from reality that entire announcement was. Within minutes, the Xbone name was blowing up on the internet. I asked a good friend of mine at Xbox what the heck had happened. Why hadn't he stopped this? Why in the world didn't they play the kindergarten game with the name? Anytime you're naming something, you have to play the kindergarten game that everybody plays with their children. You know, okay, I'm going to give my child this name. Now, how are people going to butcher that their first day in school, right? What he told me was stunning. He actually hadn't heard the name. He was a very senior person at Microsoft, and he didn't know the name until everyone else. I was working on the Gears franchise when the new leadership came in. I figured it wouldn't impact me. I had just shipped Gears of War 1, the PC version was going along pretty well, and I had a great relationship with Epic Games. I know there's a lot of folks here from Microsoft Game Studios. I know Laura Fryer's over there sitting with us, and she always gets to watch me accept the awards, but you just you should stand up, and everybody else from MGS should too, because they put their heart and soul, and a lot of them put their asses on the line for this game, and uh, you know, we just had a fantastic partnership, so thanks very much. Life was good, everyone was happy. Why would you mess with success? When new leadership joined, they immediately reorganized the team. Instead of having all the games as part of one publishing group, they broke them up into their own business units. My boss, Bonnie, moved over to start 343. And as for me, I was promoted to lead the Gears business. Just kidding. I actually got a new boss. Maybe I should have been more upset, but at the time I wasn't. I hadn't really thought through the implications of what this meant. Reorgs happened all the time, and the implications just didn't land on me right away. In retrospect, it was really dumb, but uh, I was busy. I was shipping gears, and I was happy, so I just didn't really think about it. My first impressions of the new leaders were very good. My new boss was nice. He was supportive. The problem was that there was no job. Everything he thought he'd be doing was already being done by me or someone on the team. Remember, the game was being made externally by Epic Games. There was no large internal team for him to manage. And then there was the hypocrisy problem. Microsoft had been beating the drum about promoting accomplished women. I was one of the most successful people on the team, and I happened to be a woman. Yet I got a new boss instead of a promotion. It wasn't a good look. And that was the problem. Nobody was happy. Our developer Epic Games was upset. The internal team was upset. All day long, team members were streaming into my office talking about what an outrage it was. And then there was me. I was happy to just sit in my office and ship Gears of War, but instead I was thrown into the middle of this. I had to deal with this and everyone was watching. I was mortified. To be clear, I wasn't upset with my new boss. He didn't know what he was getting into. He didn't realize that I was already doing the job. 
and that there was really nothing for him to do. It wasn't fair to him either, and I reminded the team of that every day. Here's the challenge. As a leader, you try to support your management. You do your best to walk people through the decisions even when you don't agree with them or weren't involved in them. It's part of the job. But there comes a time when you have a choice, sell your soul or live in truth. The truth was that the team was right and they were asking me the hard questions. Why put in all of this effort? Why work hard in this environment? If you can't get promoted, as successful as you've been, who can? I didn't have an answer, and this eventually led to me leaving Microsoft after shipping gears too. But that's another story. Just like that, the culture had shifted. My observation is that with a patronage culture, it starts becoming more about figuring out how to get close to those in power. And it's a really big change from what we had. Everyone gets really quiet and risk averse while they figure out what to focus on, who not to offend. It disrupted everything. Suddenly, everyone was focused on everything but the products. They were worried about their position, so they weren't thinking about Xbox, and they weren't thinking about Gears of War 2. And then there were the interviews. There were several people the new leadership wanted to bring on board. That's normal. Part of the reason you bring in new leaders is that they will attract talent that you may not have had access to otherwise. A lot of good employees will follow a good leader. I remember we had a designer come in to interview as a creative director. His resume was weak for the role, so it was a bit surprising to me that he was being considered. But I wasn't worried. Microsoft had a pretty solid interview process. We'd figure out if it made sense for him to be in the role. Five to six people would interview a candidate and give their recommendations. If it was a mixed interview with some hires and some no hires, the manager would talk to everyone and then they got to decide what they wanted to do. It was their choice. If it was all no hires, they didn't get to choose. The person didn't get hired. He got all no hires and they still brought him in. I had been at Microsoft at this point for almost 16 years and that was the first time I had seen a leader make that kind of a decision. So it was notable. The actions by the new leadership had effectively told us that our opinions didn't matter, that qualifications didn't matter. There were many other signals that the culture had broken. For example, leadership was never on site. I knew someone that sat in the hallway of this decision-making cabal, and it was always empty. Microsoft had this open door culture. You could walk into Robbie's office at any time with feedback, and we did. Well, open door policies don't work if you're never there. The not being on site thing was also weird because we were told that one of the reasons Peter Moore had left was because he wanted to live in San Francisco. So now everyone was wondering why the new people were allowed to manage remotely. It doesn't matter what you say your culture is. People watch what you do and how you act, and that is your culture. Xbox wasn't the same team at this point. And then of course, there was the Kinect being included in the box. This was just such a bad decision, and it showed that the feedback loop externally was also broken. The Kinect was cool technology, no doubt, but including it in the box by default and charging an extra $100, that was madness. And everyone but the new cabal could see it. 399 euros. Gamers didn't want Kinect. The market had already spoken. Sure, people thought it was cute and gimmicky, but not everybody had bought one. Game developers and publishers certainly didn't want to support it. What it meant for them is that the box would be less powerful and they'd be required to support a controller that wasn't appropriate for many of their games and it wouldn't work on other platforms. Platform differences mean extra work and with the Kinect, there wasn't a lot of reward for that extra work. Part of what made Xbox great is we really tried to create a listening culture. We had the Xbox advisory board to get feedback from our developers. We had a great playtesting team that would help validate feedback from customers. All of these feedback loops were healthy. What happened? Did the new leadership hear the feedback and ignore it? Or did they quit asking? Since I had left after Gears 2 shipped, I don't know the answer to these questions, but it's clear to me that the feedback loop internally and externally was broken. The complexity of running a business like Xbox is extreme. You can't be an expert in all of the work that is being done in the organization. That's why you need to create a healthy feedback loop with your team and your partners. My observation of the best leaders is that they have humility. I'm the leader of the team, it's my responsibility, it's my obligation, and I felt like I failed. They recognize the value of the team and they listen. They know how to surface the feedback, judge it, and act on it. The reason Xbox is struggling is because the culture changed 
and now Phil is trying to change it back. I had no training in running a team of that size or the platform team or the hardware team. So I knew that it would be a challenge. One of the things that was really hard about the Xbox One launch was Phil had more than a broken business. He had a broken culture. There were people who would literally come up to me in, in tears. Who had killed themselves to try to get a product into market. The product did not make gamers happy. So I knew we had to get the team on board. We have to believe in why we're here. I had to try to continue to see Xbox be an important brand in gaming. But it's not just about me. As a leader, you realize that if we can't empower our great people to do great things that we should give up. I knew that this effort would take the entire team and it was going to be incredibly hard. A part of me will always love the Xbox and the team that we build. You see, when you put your heart and soul into building something, it becomes a part of you. The original Xbox team was proud of what we'd built and even as we scattered off to new adventures, our hearts were still there. We want them to succeed. I hope they will eventually turn the corner and find their way back.